We're here with Mika Galval at the 2024 IBJJF European Jiu-Jitsu Championships. Mika, it's going to be your first Europeans competing as a black belt. Talk about your expectations and how excited you are to be at this event. Um, so, I've spoken a few times for people here and I just can't explain the excitement that I'm having right now. I wasn't planning on coming to Europeans at all. And, of course, it kind of got me sad because I've been dreaming of coming to Europeans as a black belt like maybe for three years now. <laughs> and. I don't know, it's just a, a very cool feeling because I've been watching Europeans probably one year, the first year as a black belt I watched it, the second year I wasn't able to compete and then now the third year I'm coming here and being able to witness, being able to see the bracket I'm going to uh, participate is something that uh, gets me a very good feeling uh, of excitement, uh, happiness and also you know, I, I want to go there and like compete and do my best. Oh my gosh, someone fall. <laughs> so you decided to compete at middleweight this year. Can you talk about that decision and just what, what went into you making the decision to compete as a middleweight? Actually, I've been middleweight for probably those three years that I've been uh, as a black belt. But the thing is, my first year I decided to go lightweight because I knew that right after on the next year I wouldn't be able to do lightweight anymore. Because people say that like the, 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 the man still develops into his 21s, 22, 25 years. And I've been like probably 81, 82 kilos for the past three years, but uh, I've been feeling a little harder to cut the weight to 76 for like about a year from now on. So actually right now I'm just going on my regular weight. I decided that I, I took upon the quest of like, okay, I'm going to do middle weight right now. I'm just going to compete everything that I can and you know, get as much uh, experience that I can. <laughs> so middleweight is obviously a very stacked division. There's so many incredible athletes at middleweight. This weekend you have Andy Murasaki in your bracket, who's yep. an amazing competitor. Can you talk a little bit about your bracket and about Andy specifically? Uh, so there's many names in there. Uh, I think I saw four big names that I could possibly uh, go and have a very tough match. Uh, first match, uh, second match, they, I think that they're going to be very strong matches. For example, my second match, I have the possibility of going against Tariq upside. So like, I saw that from match one to four, I'm going to have a very loaded one. And of course, Andy is a very strong name there. I think that he's one of the main athletes that has been conquering and taking uh, very good uh, competitions. Of course, uh, he also went to lightweight, middleweight, and then in medium heavyweight. So I was kind of like, thinking is he gonna do middle oh yeah he's in the middle now so it's kind of fun I've never fought with him people have been asking me to uh, do that match with him but I think we never uh, kind of agreed to do something we never got the chance to uh, go into a competition also so that's something that I'm excited for uh, I see him as a very good competitor and someone that I can try myself with and you know I think that name doesn't mean anything for me I can go in there and like who's the first match he can also do the same because uh, it's a match, it's a digital match. You never know what's going to happen. Someone can get injured, someone can get tapped, someone can get uh, uh, lost some points. So it's something that I'm just like focusing on the first match tomorrow, <laughs> Friday. <laughs> There's a lot of other really amazing black belts competing yeah. at the Europeans. Any chance we could see you in the open class? Not this year, not this year. I, I, I'm focusing a lot on uh, doing my division, but there's big plans coming up for this year. Uh, I think that last year and uh, the, my first year, I didn't do as much, but this year I'm planning on doing some very big things. <laughs> so I want to get your take on the European Jiu-Jitsu scene and just how you've seen it grow over the years. Like obviously Jiu-Jitsu has been really big in Brazil and the U.S., but I feel like it's made a lot of big jumps in growth in Europe. Can you talk about what you're seeing here and how you feel like the scene's kind of evolved over time since you've been training? I'm not going to lie, it's crazy. Because, like, there is a, a few times that I've been to places and they're like, oh, where do you think it's big jiu now? And then they name three main places. Of course, there's other names growing up, but uh, 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 ERA, Brazil, U.S., UAE, uh, there's so many places growing in jiu-jitsu and I got happy because like everywhere that I go I have a place to train <laughs> so it's very cool that I go to Europe right here and there's me guys who are like oh Mika I'm your fan I'm like oh where are you from oh Croatia Polonia Ireland I'm like dude that's so crazy <laughs> and you never like have been to those places but people know you it's something that uh, I, I'm just amazed I hope that jiu-jitsu one day will be in every single corner of this world I'm just uh, 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 excited to see how much we can actually grow for example, uh, Mo has been doing such a crazy event with ADCC that has like reached like 13,000 capacity on very big events. So you can see kind of like an UFC inside of Jiu-Jitsu, and it's something amazing. I just can't wait for a uh, uh, world, uh, uh, Europeans, something like the same spectacle, like 
so much people. I was walking there and I couldn't actually barely walk. Like there were so many people, it was kind of like crowded. I was trying to get to the the King's booth and it was like full all the time. Like, dude, <laughs> they gotta they gotta rock the space a little bit. <laughs> but it was very fun. Like meeting so many fans around here in Europe. This is something actually very crazy. <laughs> So you mentioned that you have big plans for the rest of 2024. You're competing in the first major Gi Championship this year. Can we expect to see you at the Pans, Brasileiros, and Worlds? Yes. <laughs> I could say yes. Uh, Brasileiros, it's a must. Uh, it's going to be in my hometown. kind of. Not on my hometown. It's going to be where I live right now, which is Sao Paulo. Uh, Worlds, for sure. And Pans, okay, that's going to be a very big spoiler, but I already got my ticket. <laughs> so, yeah, people will see me there in Pans. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. I cannot you. wait to watch you compete, and good luck this year. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate Thank you, brother. <laughs>